Hey y'all, today I'm going to show you how you can use Gadget's Use Action Form Hook to manage your front end state and call actions in your Gadget back end when you're building forms. I'm going to walk through a simple example first, show you how you can use front end validation and such, and then I will get into a few more complex examples, including how we manage form state when we have nested data models or related data models, and how we can use our use action form hook with controlled component libraries such as Shopify Polaris. Let's get started. I already have a simple app that I've put together. So you can see I have a person data model with some important personal information such as name and favorite Pokemon. And then I have built a simple front end form so people can go ahead, enter their name and select their favorite Pokemon. And favorite Pokemon is just an enum value right now. So if I go ahead and take a look at my form code right now, it's very much just simple HTML tags. I don't have any sort of state management going on. If I were going the kind of traditional React route, I would need use state hooks or something like that in order to manage this form state in the front end. And for this simple example, that might be okay. But as my form grows, as I add more personal information to my model and want to capture that in the form, it starts to get hairy to manage. So I'm going to show you how use action form hook can be used to simplify the handling of your form state and call your backend actions in gadget. So I'm going to start by importing uh, my use action form state hook or use action form hook uh, from our gadget ink react package i will note that we do have documentation here use action form and this is in our reference page so if you click on reference go to gadget ink react use action form everything is available here this is a wrapper around the excellent React Hooks Forms library. Um, so if you are looking for more documentation than we have here, you can go to their docs. We also do have a front end forms guide in our guides section uh, that is useful. Walks through things like registering fields, front end validation, some of the things I'm gonna walk through in this video. So if you prefer it in written form, it's right here. I'll go back to my app. Now I'm gonna go ahead and import my API client. And that should be all I need to get started. So first I'm gonna go ahead and call my hook. Uh, I'm gonna get back a, a register and a submit. And then I'll go use action form api.person. And I actually pick one of my actions. So I'm gonna go create to create new records uh, for my data model, my person model. Submit is just a function that will be called and it's gonna call this action. Um, as you might guess, I can actually just add this to my form on submit and that will take care of form submission for me. So that's kind of done, which is great. Register is what I use to actually uh, control my front end components and tie them to certain fields in my data model. So I can go ahead, I'm just gonna spread the result and as input, I am just gonna pass in person, which is the name of my data model, dot name. So name is the field I want to tie to this input and use action form is gonna handle all of my state for me. So I don't need to write any use state hooks or do any manually handling, uh, no on change, no value, that is taken care of for me. I can do something similar for my radios, uh, similar to how I use name to make sure the radios are all tied together so I can only select one. I'm gonna register the same field on each of my radio inputs. Everything else will be taken care of. So I am just gonna go ahead, do the same thing, register person.favorite Pokemon. I can get rid of this name. And I am just gonna do the same thing for all of my radios, remove the names, and I should be good to go. So let's test this out. If I go over to my front end, hot module reloading should be working, but I am just gonna refresh to make sure. And I will go ahead, oh, enter my name, Riley Droward. I will select my favorite Pokemon, Slowpoke, and I will press submit. So I haven't done any sort of handling to update this form after I submit, uh, clear it out, 
say your submission was successful. I'm gonna show you that in a little bit. But if I do go check out my gadget person data page, I see that Riley Droward was created. Slowpoke is my favorite Pokemon. So I was able to successfully uh, write my form, handle the state and call my person create action uh, without really writing a ton of custom code, which is fantastic. There are a couple other things you can do with use action form. Uh, it's really useful to walk through. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna show you is how to add a little bit of front end validation. So now that we've walked through the simple case, I'm gonna show you how you can do some additional things starting with front end form validation. So let's say I wanna make my name input required. I can't submit my form without it. Very simple to do. I can just add an additional object to my register call required, true, and all of a sudden my form will not be submitted unless I have that name field filled out. So if I go back to my form, I just select a Pokemon, press submit. You see the name input now has focus. And if I go back to my person data, nothing has been added. So that is good, we know it's working. We can also show some validation errors here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add form state as a return value from my use action form. And I'm just gonna go ahead and grab errors, uh, which is a nested object here. And so what I can do, uh, errors will show errors for each registered model and field. So as an example, probably just easiest to show this, if I just want to uh, make my input red when validation fails, I can go ahead and do something like style errors dot person dot name so if there is a error that has to do with the name field uh, i want to go ahead and just make the border color red excellent so let's test this out now go back to my form submit I see my border color is now red and I can use the same thing to display some text such as a span. So if I wanna come down here, I can do the same kind of check, you know, I can almost copy this directly, errors.person.name. And let's just add a, a span, we'll give it some style. Uh, we'll just go color red. And we can just say like, name is required and once again testing that out cool so that's working so that's how we can do front-end form validation we can also do some submit handling uh, so like if we're submitting and we want to disable our form submission button that is supported we can also display a success message when submit is successful or else clear out our form so I'm gonna show you those two things next. So in our form state, we also have is submitting, and you may have seen is submit successful. Uh, so these are two Boolean values I can use to manage some of my front end form state. Uh, so for example, if I just want to disable my input button, uh, my submission button, uh, when we're submitting the form, I can go ahead and do that. Is submitting. Let's test it out. I'll enter my name again, Slowpoke. So you see my button was very briefly disabled. So we know that that is working great. If I go check out my data models again, we see the submit was successful. So that's fantastic. And then for using is submit successful to actually do something, uh, I might want to clear my form. So maybe that's a useful thing to walk through, like reset it to empty. So there is actually a uh, reset function we can call. And in this case, I can actually go ahead, I'm gonna use a, a use effect hook. And I can do something like this, uh, where we have a use effect. I can set is submit successful as the dependency for that hook. And then I can go ahead and just call reset. I can also pass values into reset if I want to uh, 
change what it's reset to. So by default, it'll reset to the uh, initial state, which will be empty for create, but this does have an effect on updates. So let's go test this out now. So if I once again, enter my name, select Slowpoke, press submit, my form was cleared. So that's fantastic. We know that that works. So this was a very simple use case for creating. I can also use use action form with update actions, which is really groovy. So let's check that out next. If I go back to my form, I can simply go api.person.update. And then I need to provide it some information on what record I actually want to update. So you can pass parameters, additional parameters into use action form as well. Don't need two commas. Uh, so I'm just gonna go find by, this is the simplest way, and it's just gonna find by the ID for my person record. Uh, so for example, I believe my first person here I, has an ID of four. So I'm just gonna hard code it for now. Uh, you might want pass that in as some sort of parameter, probably do, and you can do that. So if I change this to update and find by four, that's fantastic. Um, if I go back to my front end form here, you see, even if I refresh the page, maybe a better evidence or a better display, better demo, uh, we see that person four or a person of ID four, that's me, Slowpoke, uh, has been pre-selected and the state is already filled out. So my use action form call is going and fetching that record from my database, populating my front end components, and I'm good to make edits now. I can also change this reset. So for now, I am just going to go ahead and comment the reset out. What will happen is when I submit my form, my submit will be successful. It'll call reset and it'll reset things to my initial form state, which will be this. So I'm gonna comment this out just so my form isn't reset, uh, just to show you uh, what it looks like. So if I go ahead, update my favorite Pokemon to Slowbro and press submit, so that's great, it looked like it worked. If I go to my data model, I see that Slowbro is now the favorite Pokemon selected for the person of ID4. So that is fantastic. That was a very simple example. I do encourage you to go look at our front end forms builder and our docs and the React hook form docs for more information. Next, I'm gonna go through a more complex example and show you how we can use use action form for models that have relationships, as well as for controlled component libraries such as Shopify Polaris. To show off more complex use cases for use action form, I'm actually gonna use our Shopify product quiz app template. It is available on our gadget homepage under the template section, so you can go ahead and fork it, take a look yourself. I'm here in our product quiz app, and I am just going to look at our front end form we use for the quiz. So the quiz is more complex because we have this quiz data model that has questions, it has many questions, questions have many answers, answers have recommended products. So there are many layers of nested data models, related data models that we wanna capture in a single form. So if I go ahead and check out my quiz, this is my form, so I can go ahead and add a name and description to my quiz, add questions, I can add multiple answers. Let's go ahead and add a name here, my quiz. So I can go ahead, add answers, add additional questions. I want use action form to handle all of this for me. Let's take a look at how we do it. So I will just go into my front end folder here you can either look at create quiz page or edit quiz page. I'm actually gonna look at edit quiz page, which calls our quiz.update action, uh, just because it shows all of the nested state really nicely. So we can see here right at the top, we are calling use action form with our quiz update action, and we are passing in a select query, and we are going ahead and we are doing all of these related models. So we can see it's questions, it's answers under questions. We have recommended product and product suggestion. So all of these are related models and we're managing all of the state with use action form. Before I show off how exactly we manage this nested state, I do just wanna do a quick diversion and talk about how we're using use action form with controlled component libraries such as Polaris. So you can see use action form also does return this 
control parameter. And we are not in this component, but in other components, importing a controller component from our Gadget Inc. React package. So if I go take a peek at our quiz form component, you see controller is imported here from Gadget Inc. React. So if I just scroll down, we have a Polaris text field here. We're wrapping it in this controller and it's on this controller component where we're using, uh, we're defining quiz.title. So that is once again, the field on the model that we want to be controlled uh, by use action form. We're passing in that control component. So we're just passing that down from our edit quiz page uh, component. And then we have a render function where we are actually rendering our Polaris component. So that's the pattern you need to use when you're using controlled component libraries, such as Polaris, uh, such as Material UI. There are other examples. Let's get back to use action form. So you can see this is how we're managing our quiz.title and quiz.body. Uh, those are both fields on our quiz model, but how do we handle questions, which are a nested or related model uh, underneath our quiz. Scrolling back up, you can see we have this use field array hook. And this is how we are actually controlling our sub model or child model underneath the quiz. So you can see we're passing in that same control object that we uh, defined with our use action form hook. And we're passing in the name quiz.questions, which is our related data model. From use field array, we get fields, which we're aliasing as questions. So this is going to be all of the questions uh, underneath a particular quiz. And then we have append and remove actions. So this is for when I add a question and when I remove a question. We can see this in action here. I can click add question and I can also remove questions from my quiz. So that is how we are handling our front end form state. If I take a peek at where we're using questions, you can see we are just able to iterate over them. It's just a map where we can then display the underlying questions. We have a button here. We're just on click remove question. That's that function defined from that use field array hook. And we're just passing in the index of the question we want removed. That will remove it from our front end state. Same thing for adding a question. We are passing some default nested answer state underneath but that is all that is happening. So use action form is taking care of everything for us. Our old version of the quiz had an entire giant utility file that was just managing our front end state. Um, and we had a bunch of use state hooks uh, that were kind of ugly. So it's really nice that this is all cleaned up. Use action form is actually managing all of our front end nested state for us. And if you trace through the quiz, you go take a look at answers, for example, you can see we are also using use field array underneath our questions to manage our answers. So we're just kind of using this pattern as we go down through our related models. So that was a very quick overview of our use action form hook and how you can use it for both simple and complex use cases. If you have any questions about anything I covered today, I would encourage you to check out our documentation or join our developer Discord and ask. Until next time, I hope you keep building more and coding less with Gadget.